On today's Two Minute Tuesday, we're going to talk about feather boards and push decks, how to use them safely and correctly. This is where we would normally run an intro, but unfortunately, I thought this was an external battery and plugged it into my phone charger, it fried it instantly. Uh, so we'll have to redo the intro and we'll have that for you next week. Uh, so let's throw two minutes on the clock and come on into the table saw. So there's lots of different kinds of push sticks, but first let's talk about the proper way to use them. Now, when you are cutting something, you want to make sure that your blade is about half to one full tooth above your workpiece and that's it. And then you're going to push it through your cut. You have to worry about two forces when you're pushing it through the cut. One is the, the up force because the blade, when it is in the wood, it's coming up. And if you're putting pressure in the back, the board can lift up, that can cause a kickback. The other thing you're worried about is it twisting into the saw, which can cause a kickback. Now, most of that is solved by the riving knife, but a lot of times people have a tendency with a push stick to put it against the fence or way too far right. And of course, when you push on it, you're pushing this way. And so before you get to that riving knife, you can cause a kickback. So your board needs to be held against the fence and down. Now there's a lot of ways to do that. One way that I like to do it is I take, you can take literally anything, but you use something like this push stick to hold it down and over against the fence. And then you wanna put your other push stick in the middle of the board. And that allows you to make a safe cut. Another thing that's really important in addition to putting your push stick in the middle or the left of the middle is you never wanna push on the left side of the blade. This is the reason that you use feather boards and why they're important, but when you're using an additional push stick, you never wanna push past the first tooth as you're entering the blade. And the reason what can happen is if you push in front of your blade, what you can do is cause the board to pinch the blade, which of course is really, that's the biggest concern of kickback is when the piece that you're cutting puts sideways pressure on the blade. And if you're pinching that into the blade, you can cause yourself some real problems. I typically like push sticks like this style, or here's another one that I made. These are from my boy Drew Fisher from Fisher's Woodshop because they have pressure that pushes down as well. And then I like to use a feather board. A feather board is great for long rip cuts because it's going to keep your board against the fence. Now, one thing that's important, if you are using a feather board, there's lots of different styles. Uh, this one's made by a friend of mine called the Hedgehog. Uh, works great. It has some limitations because it only fits in the miter slot. These mag switch ones are really, really, really strong, but the limitation is, again, when you line up with a, with a miter slot. I use this one for thin rips, so you set it to the exact width that you want your piece, and then you move your fence over and over, and that'll give you really thin cuts. Uh, but the thing that you want to make sure, and if you come around over here, you can see that you don't want it to be past the blade. And the reason is when you finish your cut, as you come through, uh, it's going to push your workpiece into the blade. And so you want to make sure that if you're using a feather board, that the pressure is put right before the blade. That is the safest spot right before the blade. And the way that I like to set these is I'll push one side against it, set my magnet, and then slide the other one over and set my magnet and that keeps it. You can, makes a cool sound when you exit. Now let's talk about the different types of push sticks and then I'll show you some examples of how I use them. Okay, so there's three basic types of push sticks. First are these, you know, foam rubber holdy down guys. Uh, these are really great when you're doing a huge piece of plywood because you can keep it pressed down and keep pressing it through. I also use these mostly on the jointer. I don't bring them to the table saw unless I'm doing really big pieces of plywood where I have a small cut and I do need to get close to the blade. Typically, if you're cutting a large sheet of plywood and you're cutting a big piece, you can use your hands because you're not anywhere near the blade. And then here's another design that I came up with that is a combination of these two types. It has a flat side with a little foot at the back uh, and then it also has a little groove right here. So you can use it like this or you can use it like this and push through. I actually made a bunch of these and I, I should remake them because I really like these. Uh, but my favorite kind are these ones that Drew Fisher makes that are really neat. And I'll link, he has free plans for these actually, which is really cool. And they, what's great about them is they have a heel on them that are uh, expendable. So you can cut through this a bunch of times. And one thing that you really want to remember about push sticks is if you cut it, you don't want to worry about cutting it. That's, it's doing its job. So when you're cutting thin pieces, and again, we'll, we'll shoot some B-roll shots to pull it in here. But if I'm cutting this piece of wood and I'm cutting it in half, 
it's okay. I'm gonna go over the blade. I'm gonna cut my piece. And because I'm only a tooth above it, we're not gonna dig into the push stick too much. Uh, but what's great about small pieces is that's when you can really have a tendency to get kickback is when a small piece gets pinched in between the fence and the blade. And so this heel is gonna support both your off cut and your piece all the way through the cut and get it past the blade so you're not at risk of any kickback. Now these are my least favorite. One, because it keeps you too far away, so you don't have a lot of control. Uh, and then the absolute worst part about them is that you can only push from the back of the wood. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna lift up unless you're doing a small piece. So if I use these, what I use them for is to hold down and push against the fence while I'm using another push stick to get through the cut. The great thing about if you don't have a feather board or you're not using one, is you can literally use anything to push against the fence. So you can use even just an off cut of wood. I'll, I'll use that all the time too, because that can get cut, no big deal. And you can push through. And I, it may seem obvious or not, but one thing you always wanna make sure that you never do is you never want to try and cut a piece that is wider than it is long. Even if you feel like you're safe because you have push sticks here, uh, what could happen is during the cut, this portion rotates and then this piece gets pinched in the blade and kicked back. Sometimes, and I've done it on video, uh, if I have a piece that's pretty close to being, you know, uh, longer than it is wide, but maybe it's a little bit wider, I'll do it. But something like this, I would never do without a crosscut sled or a miter gauge because it is just not safe. Guys, use push sticks and feather boards. Save your fingers. They're really one of the most important things on a table saw. I'll leave some links down below to ones that I like uh, and mention, but as far as push sticks go, it's really just a great project you can do in your shop. Hopefully I kept it under two minutes. If you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a new apron, a dovetail jig, or or a stop block. Thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.